Looks like we're live. Live at five. Uh, okay, guys, welcome back to Robertson Co. Welcome back to London. Another live jewelry making session. I need to make um, some white gold wire, some one mil wire to make some rings from. So, melt some gold. And what I would normally do is pour an ingot, but I've been searching. I've got, I use different crucibles for the, each different alloy. So, as you can see, they're marked with Sharpie. Mark a pen on the back, that one's 18 karat yellow. I've got a silver one there. So one of the 18 karat yellows has got the crack in it, so there's two of those. What's the, there's a there's a nine karat, uh, no, 925, which is sterling, nine karat yellow one there, but I cannot find, I've put the nine karat white one somewhere safe and uh, can't find it. Um, I've got a bag load of these, but they're in my other workshop, fresh ones, because they do, um, they, I've never, well, so I, don't want to, uh, I have broken one melting, but um, it's no, you know, it makes a mess and you end up with a little scrap, but um, I try and switch them out when they get worryingly cracked and they tend to crack, start here and develop. Um, and sometimes I've had them sometimes, um, I mean, I think they call it seasoning the crew, you know, you just put some, borax flux in it and and warm it up gently um the first few couple of times if you and uh, that does seem to help because i think they will see um some sort of clay it's almost like firing the clay again um some of them crack on the first go some of them um last forever uh, almost seemingly others slowly go over time and that might some that's probably something to do with how tightly or maybe not Sometimes I'm guessing clamping them together tightly might help. Sometimes it might cause the cracking, but yeah, they do. They do break. Anyway, long story short, I can't find my white gold, my nine carat white one. Um, so I was going to get a new one, but because this is fresh um, white gold grain from a bullion dealer, sealed in, I reckon we will be able to melt it straight in a graphite um, mould, which according to the internet, you cannot do. <laughs> uh, you can. Um, I don't often do it. It is possible to do it with fresh grain, but if I'm using, say, like these are due, to, this is sterling silver that's due to be melted up. But this is obviously been out in the air and it's oxidised and tarnished. It doesn't. It's very clean. But I've stamped this. So there'll be bits of grease on there, and you can put it in the pickle and clean it up quite a lot. Um, but then you still end up with a layer of oxide. And what I feel. Um, putting it in these, you can see all of that black is oxides. Um, and there's some that's caused during the melting process, but I just think having the nice layer of borax and flux to clean up the metal, swirl it around and then pour it, I think it just helps clean any impurities from the metal for one. And I've had issues with sterling silver, melting it directly in the ingot mold. I'm not entirely sure whether that was just caused by the graphite, but I've had some weird things happen, which is like black, a black oxide like exuding almost like a toothpaste tube squeezing out of the um the silver when i've then subsequently been um annealing it which i've never seen before using metal i've never seen before any other way other than melting directly in a graphite ingot mold so you have to presume that that played a part <laughs> No idea what that's all about. There's no one else on the in. I'm not saying there's no one else doing this. They're just not sharing the experience on the internet. Plus, if they, you know, people are very reluctant to share the fails, which I think is a uh, the funny enough the most helpful. You know, sharing successes is all very well and good, but you know, don't learn a lot from it, do you? Right. So we're just gonna melt that up. Um, we'll see how that flows about. I could do with a couple of pairs of tweezers here just to, um, are they clean? Really just to um, maybe make sure it's um, moving around enough. Um, this might fail, um, but at least we can give it a go. Um, 
And if I need to remelt, if if, the, if it causes impurities in the metal, well, I'll get and I'll make sure I've got one of these for white gold for the next one, and uh, we'll go again. But I actually haven't, from memory, I haven't had any issues melting gold directly in graphite. Um, I, but I have had issues with silver. So I use a Smith. So I've got a propane oxygen generator, so I don't keep bottled oxygen. It's expensive. Um, I've got a hospital oxygen generator and. Um, yeah, Smith's little torch. So we need to get the mould up to temperature, welding goggles. Um, people have uh, commented that these are not welding goggles, I assure you they are. Proper UVEX. Um, I think these are, what are these? I'm guessing, is that level 3? IVO? Oh, anyway, UVEX, IVO this kind of uh, work they're cool. Yeah, we're gonna need to get the, um, that kind of flame, get you a bit of soot in there, which I probably should have put in first, to um, help stop any sticking. We need to get the mold up to the temperature and the metal. Another downside of doing this, as opposed to using the crucible and pouring, um, getting the crucible, getting the, the ingot mould, I'm going to mix the two up all, all the time this, um, but getting the mould that hot and melting in it means the uh, the ingot mould is going to last not so long. If you've ever used an electric melting furnace, you'll see the state that the crucible is getting. Kind of become they disintegrate. Sure, I think I might be running out of gas. The oxygen just wants to blow that out.
Well, I'm just gonna let it cool down. Well, solidify. I, I would Im I'm guessing from my basic, cooling it down slowly like this can um, harden it. So what I'm gonna do, um, I will let this air, once this, I will let this air cool, but then once it's air cooled and I've got it out of the, um, got it out of the mold, um, I will then anneal it. And the gold I will anneal it and quench it. With silver I don't quench it. Um, quenching it for the silver is real problematic. But with the gold, Actually, I'm going to experiment with this one. With the white gold, I think. With the yellow gold, I do quench it. With the white gold, I think I... Uh, I might go down the... Uh, the dry quenching route, where I get it up to temperature and then stick it on the steel block. Basically to um, heat sink. See that uh, gas flame put a nice black layer of soot on it. Let's uh, turn the air off, turn the gas off, see if we can get that out. But yeah, it melts up nicely in the uh, in the mould. Even despite the internet saying that you can't, I'm not saying you should. Um, it makes a lot more sense to, to melt in the crucibles, um, just because you can add, I, I don't add flux to these, so, because um, that will definitely shorten the life of uh, doing this, but it doesn't help either. Yeah. yeah. There. I'm gonna move the camera closer to that, not the other way around. Yeah, that's a cool looking ingot. Nice and white, sooty on top. Yeah, looking good. The, uh, the mold survived. Right, let me give you a little close up of that, but I'm gonna let that air cool. The next stage will be to reheat it dull red up to a kneading temperature. I tend to um, hold the gold longer than the silver. With the silver annealing, my process, and this process has changed a lot. So I've got what I'm doing at the minute with silver, I take it to anneal it. With silver, what I'm doing at the moment is taking it up to uh, dull red as quickly as possible. And then letting the redness so it almost looks, looks, you know, room temperature. It's not, it'd be still roasting hot, just not red hot. Once the red's gone out of it, and then dry quenching it, which means putting it on the steel block, which is just sucks, which cools it down quite quickly um, by sucking the heat out of it. That's with silver. With gold, um, with yellow gold, the plan is um, heat it up. Uh, they call it, what do they call it? Um, Soak it, is it heat soaking? So, um, heat soaking, so you basically warm, get it up to a dull red, but hold it there for a little while, uh, just a short period, you know, a minute or so, and um, then quench with the white gold. I think I'm going to be the, the with the white gold because of the um, potential silver content. I think I'm going to do a mix of the two, so I'm going to heat to anneal that. I'll heat it up and essentially heat soak it. But then I'm gonna dry quench it, so I use the steel block as a heat sink rather than wet quenching it in water or alcohol. Um, let's give you a little uh, close up of the uh, still hot. But yeah, there we go. There's a nine. That's ten grams, by the way. Ten grams of nine carat white gold. The black on there is the soot from the propane. But yeah, looking good so far. Now the fun begins of turning that into uh, 
wire. Right, I'll see you next one.